When creating a RESTful HTTP API, status codes can be a good way to indicate to the client if a request was successful or not. But if there was a problem, how do you tell the client specifically what was wrong? Well, here's the most common thing that I usually see. Here are two made up request responses that I've made, but these are based on real HTTP APIs that I've consumed recently. So this one is, we've got back a 400 bad request. If we look at the headers, we've returned an application in JSON. And in the body, we can see that we have a property called message, which contains a human readable message of what went wrong, that some product was not uh, was already available for sale. And then we have documentation, which is a link to probably some docs that you're not likely gonna read. All right, so the second example is a little bit different in, I've also seen this, where we have the status code is a 200 okay, and, but in the actual body, we have a success property, which is defined as false. So we're not really using the status code in any meaningful way here, just clearly returning 200 okay. So we have to use this to determine whether our request was successful. And this error object actually is useful because we have code, which probably relates to some documentation that we can use at development time to figure out, okay, if it's this particular error code, it means this exactly, and we can build that our UI or however we're consuming that appropriately. Then we have the type, which is probably something very similar, which is a key, something again, machine readable that we can use um, at design time. And then info is just kind of that actual error message. That's a human readable message that we may use and show the user or whatever the case may be. So what do these two error responses have in common? Well, they're errors, but beyond that, nothing. They have nothing in common. Wouldn't it be awesome if there were a standard way to define errors from your HTTP API? Well, the good news is there is, and it's called problem details. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from codeopinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. Problem details, which is RFC 7807, aims to set out exactly solving that problem, which is that status codes alone don't provide enough information to the client about what the issue is. So most of the times, obviously when we're consuming APIs, we're doing it from a separate application, from a separate service. And we want more information just besides human readable text about what the actual problem is. And that's what problem details set to kind of define a standard on a way to do that. So I have a separate API that I've created that implements problem details. And we're looking at pretty much the exact same type of error that I was showing earlier. So I have a 400 bad requests but I have additional properties now that are really useful from consuming from an API. So the first thing that's uh, probably the most useful in my opinion is the type. So the type is supposed to be a URI or a relative path to where you're making this request to um, that should be something stable. The point of this is to provide similar to where I had that documentation uh, URI, it's supposed to be the same type of thing but it's something to be stable that you can use like an error code or like some type of error key, something that's not gonna be changing, that's gonna represent, okay, if I see this uh, example.com slash problem slash already available, that's gonna stay the way it is. That means something specific that I can then in my client show an appropriate error message or have some type of compensating action, but that's a that defines specifically what the error is to our consuming API client. So the second thing is the title, and this is just human readable text about what the title of the error is. Nothing too special here. Maybe you wanna show this to your actual end user, the end client. And I have a status code, which represents the exact same status code that um, is coming back from our response. Detail, same thing, more of a description, could be a longer thing. Again, human readable. So the instance property is a URI that's supposed to represent the actual specific occurrence of the actual problem. And then lastly here, I have the uh, trace ID, which is a good example because this actually isn't a part of the standard, but it's called uh, an extension. You can basically add any additional properties or objects a part of your response for additional information. So there's this kind of a set of these type, title, status, detail, instance, which are a part of the standard, but you can feel free to add additional properties as you see fit. So the reason why extensions are pretty important in my opinion, because if you're leveraging the type as a machine readable um, URI, and you're using that as a key to identify specific problems or errors, you then know when you're developing, um, looking at the responses, if you see that particular type that represents a certain error, you know that at that point, oh, maybe there's these additional properties based on the documentation I read, these additional properties should exist 
as extensions a part of my problem details response. So if you're using ASP.NET Core, you can already do this today. On the base controller, there is a problem which you can then pass all the optional parameters like the detail, the instance, the status code, the type and the type. And what I'm doing here is that proves this point is that I have two different situations where I'm going to be returning a, a 400 because two different types of problems. If this is in my warehouse code demo app here that I've been using in most of my videos, and if a product you're trying to set a, a product that you can, it's for sale now, but if it's already for sale, then we're returning the problem saying the product is already available for sale. And that has a particular type that we've defined. But if the product's unavailable and we're going to mark it uh, being available for sale now to our customers, but we don't actually have any quantity on hand, well, that's a separate problem. So we're returning that specific type. So if I look back to Postman here, here was the first one where the product is already available for sale. And then now we can see our separate um, response here. If the quantity is on hand, uh, we don't have any. It's uh, a different type of error. But the schema is the same, is the key part. And if I look at the headers of this uh, response, we can see here that the content type that was returned is application slash problem plus JSON. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's really gross because I don't have any of that logic within a controller, then you're probably gonna wanna use something like a middleware, which I've been using this one for forever now. And this is by Christian Heleng, and if I said his name correctly, and this is how you configure it. It's basically in your startup, you're basically mapping exceptions to how you wanna handle that and translate that into a problem details. So you have that option as well. So problem details doesn't solve every problem. And the biggest issue I've had with it is when you have multiple problems that you want to define in the response. And the only way that I can find around this really is to define a specific type that your client's looking for that it knows that then at that point there's an extension that's probably an array of what the problem details actually are. So if you're writing HP APIs, please take a look at problem details and consider implementing it. People like myself that consume HP APIs will thank you that we can finally stop writing custom one-off error handling code for every HP API we consume. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And again, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.